Hello again from Digicore Things. Following one of my recent 6809 system testing videos, a viewer, Scott, asked if the system could run at 3 MHz, or perhaps even a little higher. In my last video, I fully tested the system running at the official Motorola data sheet, maximum clock speed of 2 MHz. The official rating of the fastest Motorola B speed grade chips. Noting that I do have some Hitachi HD63C09 CPU chips, all I had to do was get a hold of a 12 MHz oscillator to allow a 3 MHz system speed test via the standard divide by 4 clock. Unlike Motorola, Hitachi went to a C speed grade with their 6309 version of the 6809, officially supporting a 3 MHz clock speed with the 63C09. The 63C09 chips that I have, I'd put aside, as they were one of the mismarked batch of chips I'd received from China. Although marked as HD63C09P, they did in fact test as being external clock E suffix chips. In addition, as they were incorrectly remarked, I now didn't even know if they were genuine Hitachi C speed grade 3 MHz chips. To add to this, the three Motorola peripheral chips on the Motorola IO Plus sound card are the fastest 2 MHz Motorola B speed grade chips. So, when we try the system out at 3 MHz, we are doing it with an uncertain speed rated CPU chip and with only 2 MHz speed rated IO chips. But hey, there's only one way to find out if it'll work, and that's to give it a test. If it does work, we also know that our bus system is performing well. So without further ado, let's get our current B speed grade CPU swapped out for our questionable C speed grade CPU. So I'll take out the CPU card and let's pull out our 63B09 CPU. And I have my HD63C09P, which I know is an E chip through testing. So we'll get that inserted. And we're still set up with the clock generator for the external CPU. So first I'm going to test we are still operational at 2 MHz with a new CPU chip. So let's put the card back in the back plane and switch it on. And we're looking good. So next up, let's swap out the 8 MHz oscillator for my just received 12 MHz oscillator to deliver a 3 MHz system clock speed. So I'll switch her off. Let's take out the CPU card again. And I'll take out the 8 MHz crystal and here I have my new 12 MHz crystal so let's put the CPU card back in and we're ready for a 3 MHz power on test so here goes and we have an assist 09 prompt at 3 MHz, which is also indicating that in addition to our CPU card and backplane working at 3 MHz, our 2 MHz 68B50 ACIA is also working at 3 MHz. To check the system out more fully, I'll load an initial test program that displays a test image and cycles through the backdrop colours of our TMS9929 video card. OK, let's load that up. And with that test loaded, I'll first test our 2 MHz 68B40 PTM is still working by setting a breakpoint and also doing a single step. So I'll set a breakpoint at the start address of 0100 and let's run it. And we have stopped at 0100. And I'll also do a single step. So it looks like our PTM is also working at 3 MHz. 
Now I hit G to continue our test program. Looks great. And as you can see, the original 2 second software delay loop, based on our 1 MHz speed, which was changing backdrop colour every second at 2 MHz, is now even faster when running at 3 MHz. So far we are looking good as a successfully running 3 MHz 6309 system. So, since we're here, I do also have a 16 MHz oscillator. How confident do we feel about pushing our 2 MHz rated Motorola parts out to a full 4 MHz clock speed? I'd have to say questionable, but since I have a 16 MHz oscillator handy and we're here, let's give it a shot. Firstly, we should consider some obvious potential timing constraints. Specifically, we can consider our memory timing. With a 1 MHz clock, we have a 1 microsecond clock cycle. At 2 MHz, we have a 500 nanosecond clock cycle. So stretching to a 4 MHz clock would give us only a 250 nanosecond clock cycle. Now, some simpler 6809 system designs only use the e-clock in their memory decode logic which only allows a half clock cycle for memory access, effectively just during the e-clock's high period. This means that at a potential 4 MHz clock, you'd only have 125 nanoseconds of high level e-clock period per cycle. When you also allow for glue logic propagation delays, etc., you'd probably be restricted to 100 nanosecond or faster memory. Fortunately, 6809 has a quadrature clock with valid memory addresses being available at the rising edge of the Q clock cycle. To utilize this longer available memory access period, it was common to gate the E and Q clocks to effectively achieve a longer three quarters of a clock period for memory access. This is what I've already done in our CPU card PLD glue logic. Therefore, instead of being limited to around 100 nanoseconds memory at 4 MHz, 3 quarters of a 4 MHz clock cycle gives us about 187 nanoseconds to work with. Allowing for the propagation delay through our glue logic PLD, which is a max of 15 nanoseconds, we probably actually have around 170 nanoseconds available for memory access. Looking at our CPU card memory, we have a very fast static RAM chip in the order of 15 nanoseconds, so RAM access is not going to be an issue. For ROM, we are currently using a 28C256-15 chip. The dash 15 suffix indicates 150 nanoseconds access time. So it is looking like we'll probably still be okay at a 4 MHz clock, as far as memory access is concerned. It's interesting to note that back in the day, or at least in the late 70s or early 80s, 450 nanoseconds was the more commonly available memory access time, with more expensive devices offering 300 nanoseconds or 250 nanoseconds access times. So it's clear to see that memory access times in the early days played a big part in achievable system speed. So with that consideration aside, we are back to the question of whether our 2 MHz rated peripheral chips and 3 MHz rated CPU will all operate at 4 MHz. If it works, not only would that be surprising, but it will also be testing a bus and backplane running at a clock speed that would probably run a Z80. Note though that a 6309 running at 4 MHz has significantly more performance than a Z80 at the same clock speed. Arguably, I'd hazard a guess that the 6809 is probably around three times the performance of a Z80 at the same clock speed. I believe a 6502 is generally said to be about twice or even two and a half times the performance of a Z80 at the same clock speed. So it's reasonable to speculate that a 6309 running at 4 MHz is probably equivalent in performance to a Z80 running at maybe 12 MHz. 
a speed we would have only dreamed of having back in the day. So let's give it a try. Let's turn off the system again. I'll take out the CPU card. And let's swap the 12 MHz oscillator with my new 16 MHz oscillator. And then let's put the CPU card back in the back plane. And power up. Yes, almost unbelievably, we have an Assisto 9 prompt at 4 MHz system speed. So again, we know our CPU card, bus, and our 2 MHz rated ACIA are now running at 4 MHz. So let's test the rest of the system out. Firstly, our initial test of the video card with the software loop delaying cycling of the backdrop colors. Let's transfer that program across and run it. Okay, so well, G0100. Okay, so we're missing our test pattern, but the backdrop is quickly changing. This is actually great news, as it suggests everything is actually running okay. But we are just having some access timing issues with the TMS 9929A VRAM updates. This isn't actually surprising, as the TMS VDP chip does take some time to access the VRAM. So if the processor is too fast, can be trying to write the next byte to the TMS before the TMS VDP has completed storing the previous VRAM byte. The solution to this is probably as simple as adding a no-op instruction into any tight loops writing blocks into the VDP's VRAM. A no-op instruction simply increments the program counter and takes two cycles. I recall being surprised that no access delays were required when I first tested the VDP, even at 1 MHz. So possibly needing a small no-op delay to support a 4 MHz clock speed is not at all surprising. So let's try that out by adding some no-op instructions. Okay, let's add a no-op between the register writes and I'll copy that down to similar code in the other routines okay then we have the VRAM access Type loops right into VRAM. So I might actually put a couple of knobs in there just to be sure on the safe side. And the same with the transfer VRAM loop. Okay, that should do us. Now let's assemble that and transfer our program across once again. And let's run it. And we're looking good for success at a very fast 4 MHz, twice the Motorola rated clock speed. Notice how quickly the backdrop colour is now changing based on our 1 MHz 2 second delay loop. At 4 times speed, we are seeing a change every half a second. So the final test to check the rest of the system is to make the same no-op additions to our Christmas demo VDP routines and then check that we have sound. This will perform the final test that the PIA and sound chip are running OK at 4 MHz. Note that the sound will still play at the right tempo. 
because remember that the sound is being updated by a 20 millisecond frame interrupt from the video chip, making it independent of the system clock speed. What we will probably notice is that the notes themselves will be double the frequency, as we are now clocking the sound chip at 4 MHz instead of the 2 MHz the Christmas demo was written for. Right, let's assemble that. And transfer our program across again. And let's run it and see what we get. Well, that's really awesome. We almost unbelievably have a fully working 6309 system with I.O. and video running at 4 MHz. I've also checked that none of our chips are getting excessively hot either, after running for a reasonable period of time. Now, before finishing up, there's probably a couple of remaining tests that would be interesting to do. Firstly, I'm going to swap out the 3 MHz speed grade HD63 C09 for the earlier 2 MHz HD63B09E CPU that I was originally using. I thought it would be interesting to see if the 2 MHz B speed grade Hitachi 63B09 would also work at 4 MHz, just like the 2 MHz Motorola peripheral chips are. Also, the 63B09E that I have is a known legitimate Hitachi 2 MHz part, as it is the chip that I rubbed off the false markings with some acetone. Here is the chip as I received it. Note it is marked as HD63B09P. Here is the same chip after some acetone rubbing, showing the original chip markings of HD63B09EP, external clock. Also the date code 9G1 indicates that this was manufactured in the first week of July in a year ending in 9. Given the HD6309 was launched in 1982, we know this chip was from at least 1989. Right, let's get it swapped over. I'll turn off the system, remove the CPU card, and remove the HD63C09. Then let's insert the HD63B09. Then let's insert the CPU card back in the back plane and apply power. And we have our Assisto 9 prompt, so we'll call that a success. Next, we might as well finish off by swapping back an original Motorola MC68B09 2 MHz CPU to see if that will also work at 4 MHz. Right, let's get it swapped over. I'll turn off the system again. Remove the CPU card and remove our 63B09E. Now here's my original MC68B09P that I've had since the 80s. So let's put that one in. Now I also need to reinstall the jumper as this is a internal clock CPU or an e-version and I have to take out the clock generator, the quadrature clock generator. Right, so we have one of my original 1980s 68B09P. 
rated at 2 megahertz. Let's put the card back in and apply power. And we're not working. Right, let's try another 68B09. As I said, this is a chip I've had in my own personal stock since the early 80s. I'd have to check the date code on it. Possibly the 3 indicates 83, but it also has an 86. I'm not too sure on the date code. Now, just to double check, I have my 6809 no-op tester. Uh, let's throw the chip in there just to make sure it definitely is working. Grab our 5 volt USB power supply. And we can see the 68B09P is actually working. Internal clock. So it looks like this particular 68B09 won't work at 4 MHz. Now I've got a 68B09EP which I got from AliExpress recently. Not sure whether it's marked correctly, so let's give it a try in the 6809 internal no op tester. No go. So it might be a genuine 68B09E. Let's grab our 6809E no op tester. Throw it in there. power and it is indeed as marked a 6809E. Right so let's try that out in our CPU card. Now we'll also need to remove the jumper and put our clock chip back in. Right, let's again give that a try. Set the card, reconnect power and turn her on. And we go. So it's possible this demonstrates that the earlier MC68B09 chips were still limited to 2 MHz or not much above, where perhaps later fabricated chips um, were able to be pushed further than the data sheet speed limit. So at least we now have a 2 MHz Motorola B speed grade system running successfully at twice the clock speed 4 MHz. I think we can thank Motorola Engineering, ATF Series PLD fast propagation delay and more modern retro memory access times for our success. In fact our speed limit appears to be mostly defined by the 28C256 ROM 150ns access speed. As a parting note I want to emphasize that overclocking is not my motivation. These speed tests were simply to test the capabilities of the MECB based system to support the maximum documented speed of the Motorola 6809 and Hitachi 6309 CPUs. I am aware others have pushed the speed of retro 8-bit CPUs even higher, but as I've mentioned, potential overclocking ability is not the motivation of this project. The MECB project is purely to relive experimenting with the various 8-bit devices as we did in the early 1980s. So I think we can say that our push our 689 speed test was an outstanding success. That's it. Thanks for watching.